Okay, gang. So in this video, I really only talk. I want to talk about one reaction, no mechanism. So in that respect, I'm gonna throw a little party at your desk. But it kind of has a cool ramification. So although it's a very simple memorization reaction, it kind of has you know some cool consequences as a result. Okay. So I'm going to just draw a very simple uh, four carbon sugar a tetros, and more specifically, uh, with an aldehyde, right? So let's look at something like this. So, and this goes for any sugar, right? With an aldehyde and an uh, alcohol in the bottom, right? Or even if you have a ketose, right? With um, an alcohol and an alcohol. If you subject a sugar to nitric acid, some good old HNO3, here's what you do. You take these two top uh, groups, the aldehyde and this alcohol, and you fully oxidize them to carboxylic acids, right? So they'll look kind of like this. Everyone denotes it like this. You don't touch the alcohols within the sugar, just the end groups, the aldehyde and the alcohol. And you'll either see COOH, or some people even get a little lazier, and they'll write CO2H, right? carboxylic acid on top and on bottom. So uh, personally, I had this question on my organic two final. It was literally, I got a generic sugar. I saw HNO3. I just had to know, okay, oh, oops. Oxidize the top two groups fully all the way to a carboxylic acid. However, so that's one way you can see this question uh, involving this reaction. But there's also kind of a, a higher level way to ask this question using this reaction and it's kind of cool. So let me, I'm gonna draw some things on the board. I'm gonna erase a little bit, so give me a sec. Okay gang, so besides a complete the reaction type of uh, question you can see with oxidizing a sugar's top and bottom group with nitric acid as a complete the reaction question, here's another way you can see it. So in the previous video, right, we talked about how we can take a sugar, in this case one, two, three, four carbons long, and if we subject it to some HCN, Right, we'll protonate the aldehyde, uh, the carbonyl inside the aldehyde, and attack with CN minus, lengthening our chain by one, and then we can use diisobutyl uh, al uh, aluminum, aluminum hydride. Sorry, had a major brain fart. Diisobutyl aluminum hydride to reduce that newly added nitrile to an aldehyde. But remember, since this guy is trigonal planar, he's sp2 hybridized. I told you that attack happens on top and on bottom. So theoretically, we're going to get a 50-50 mixture. Uh, let me kind of do a little. This carbon right here is this carbon in these Fisher projections, right? Because we go from having one, two, three, four carbons to one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, right? We lengthen our chain by one. This new aldehyde is the carbon from this nitrile. And the asterisk carbon right there comes from the aldehyde that was attacked, right? And remember, with sugars, we can say that this stereocenter here is R because the OH is on the right-hand side, and here it's S, right? So we get a mixture based on the attack in this uh, structure with CN minus. So here's kind of what we can do. Let's say you wanted to see in real life how much you actually made of each of these, or if you want to do some type of separation, right? One tool you can use is let's just say we, with both of these two, I'm going to draw the kind of reaction arrows downward, we subject uh, our product mixture to nitric acid, right? Here's what that means we can do. That means our top and bottom will become carboxylic acids. 2H, sorry, hopefully you guys can see this, right? OH, OH, OH and CO2, just draw the products, OH, okay, so here's kind of what this reaction will do for us in this scenario. Can you guys see that this structure has a plane of symmetry right across the middle, whereas this one does not? This structure, throwback major long term ago, since it is symmetrical, it's meso, right? And mesostructures aren't chiral. 
they don't rotate the plane of polarized light, right? So he being meso, on the other hand, this carbon, this carbon is chiral because there is no plane of symmetry, right? So by using this nitric acid reaction, after we lengthen the chain of our carbon, uh, of our sugar by one, right? Based on our product mixture, if you can kind of oxidize both your products and you can kind of see that one is chiral, so this is achiral, right? Because it's meso. If one's achiral and one's chiral, you know, you can kind of distinguish physical properties to kind of either make a separation or see how much of one you made versus how much of another you made. So complete the reaction with HNO3, with nitric acid. Remember, you always oxidize your bottom group and your top group. And remember, sometimes it can come in handy if you know you're going to have a mixture of products and you kind of want to see what is up with it. You can kind of see if one is, you know, produces a chiral product and uh, while also producing a meso, aka a chiral product. Okay, guys, I want to include, I think, one more video. It's going to be more of like a real quick one. Just want to really introduce one kind of con or concept, maybe two videos. Just keep going on.